good morning children so you have all enjoyed your holidays now let's start again our studies so today we are going to start a new chapter and that is reproduction in organism so children you all have heard about reproduction and you know that why reproduction is necessary in all living beings because through reproduction life is only possible on this earth so let us start with the first and that is the life span so children what is a life span a life span means the duration of time between the birth and the death or we can say that an individual attaining a certain age between birth and its natural death and that is known as life span a life span may be short or may be long so here some of the animals are given who shows their life span so how long they live so butterfly it lives 1 to 2 weeks fruit fly it lives 1 month crow it lives 15 years and so on so children this is life span and every living organism has its own life span so we'll move on to reproduction so what is reproduction now reproduction it is a biological process okay it is a biological process in which an individual or an organism it gives rise to its own offspring now these offspring they grow mature and again repeat the process so it is the characteristics of all living organism and the basic features of reproduction are that replication of dna takes place synthesis of rna takes place cell division and growth of cells is there formation of reproductive units and the development of new individual from these reproductive units so children again a question arises what is the purpose of reproduction what is the purpose or what is the importance of reproduction in every organism because reproduction is necessary for the continuity of the species for population organization replacement variation and life now again there are two types of reproduction asexual and sexual reproduction now asexual reproduction means the production of the offspring by a single parent now in this asexual reproduction children with the formation and fusion of haploid gametes is not required only single parent is there and this single parent is capable enough to produce their new young one now these young ones they are morphologically and genetically identical and they are known as clones now asexual reproduction usually occurs in lower class of animals like protista monera then protozoans so all these animals they show asexual reproduction and what are the basic features or characteristics of asexual reproduction are it is uniparental that means only one individual is required and it does not involve any formation and fusion of gametes it also does not require formation of special reproductive organ so in asexual reproduction any part of an organism can reproduce now all the cell division in asexual reproduction they are mitotic so they are also known as somatogenic reproduction now the daughter individuals they are identic identical to each other and they are said to be clone now it is a rapid or the fast means of reproduction haploid diploid alternation of generation does not occur in this asexual reproduction and there is also no wastage or extra expenditure on the body resources now let's move on to types of asexual reproduction now asexual reproduction occurs by 
various ways like fission and fission binary fission is there multiple fission is there then budding fragmentation regeneration sporulation and gemmule formation now what is a fission now fission it occurs by the division of parent body into two or more daughter individuals which are identical to their parents now so fission it is of two types binary fission and multiple fission now this binary fission in which the parent organism divides into two halves and they form a independent daughter organism whereas in multiple fission number of daughter cells are produced from parent organism so let's see about the different types of animals showing binary fission now here amoeba now irregular binary fission in amoeba this is a mobile cell amoeba cell and in this cell nucleus is present which divides into two halves and cleavage is occur in between the two half of the amoeba and after some time they get detached from each other and forming daughter amoeba next is paramecium now in paramecium also children two macro and micro nucleus they divide and constriction occurs in between the paramecium and after some time they get detached from the parent body the in euglena fission occurs horizontally so cleavage occurs here and from this cleavage two daughter cells are forms nucleus again gets divided and two daughter euglenia formed now in multiple fission children as i told you earlier that parent body divides into many smaller individuals like in amoeba plasmodium and monocystis now in amoeba children amoeba withdraws its pseudopodia you know pseudopodia that it forms pseudopodia which helps in movement so amoeba withdraws its pseudopodia and secretes a thick cyst around and remains consistent during unfavorable condition that means when unfavorable conditions are there then amoeba forms a cyst around itself and it remains consistent for that period and when the favorable conditions returns the nucleus of encysted amoeba they gets divided several times and they form daughter nucleus which is also surrounded by cytoplasm and cell membrane now they now these are known as pseudo podio force now on the rupture of this cyst wall these are released in the surrounding medium and they go into new amoeba now this cyst when it is formed around the new amoeba then the formation of the cyst is known as sporulation now this is spore formation it is found in algae fungi bryophyta pteridophytes and also in protozoans and the spores they may be thin walled or thick walled they may be motile or non motile that means they show mobility mobility or non mobility now there is according to the thin walled thick walled motile or non motile the spores are again divided into several types now number 1 is the zoospores now these two spores they are microscopic flagellated and motile spores that means they are seen they can be seen under microscope they have flagella or finger like projection is there in a body of an organism and they are motile so with the help of this flagella they move okay so they they are produce spores are produced inside the zoospore region 
Now these are without resistant cover. That means no cyst, no outer wall is there, and they are dispersed by swimming, like Chlamydomonas, Eulothrix, Edogonium, and Fungi. Okay. So in this type of spores or zoo spores, the naked cell is there, or naked spore is there, in which outer covering is absent. Number two is sporangiospores. Now these sporangiospores, they are non-motile, non-flagellated, thin-walled spores. Why they are non-motile? Because flagella is absent, thin-walled spores, and sporangia are formed. Spores are formed inside the sporangia. Now they are known as endospores because spores are formed inside the sporangia. Now these are dispersed by wind and they grow into a new mycelia. Now these are found in Bryzopus or Mucor or Elgi. Okay. Now Cunidia. Now Cunidia again they are non-motile fungal spores and they are produced singly or they are producing chains. Now these are chain branches or the high full branches they are known as Cunidium force. Again, they are dispersed by wind and after German dispersal, Cunidia germinates by giving out germ tubes. Uh, usually, they occurs in Asparagus and Penicillium. Now, here children, see different types of spores. Now, zoo spores, or zoo sporangium is there, then sporangiophore is there like in mucus or in rhizopus, mucor or rhizopus, not mucus children, it's mucor. Next is conidiophore or conidial chains, then clematomonas and conidia in rhizopus. So clematomonas, what are these? Now these are resting spores with thick and resistant covering to survive in unfavorable conditions. Now they are formed from hyphal cells and these hyphal cells store reserve food. When the conditions get favorable, these clematospores they germinate into new mycelium. Fifth is edia or arthrospores. Now in the presence of excess water, sugar and salt, hyphae of some fungi, they break up into small pieces or separate cells and these are known as arthrospores. Now these are thin walled and without stored food. So immediately after separation, these grow into new hyphae and multiply by budding. Now conidiosporangia, now these are non-motile asexual bodies that function as conidia in dry environment and as zoosporangia under wet conditions. That means they are showing both the nature. When the conditions are dry, they act as non-motile and conidia and then they are acting as a sexual bodies and as zoosporangia when the conditions are wet. So this is all for today children. Tomorrow we will study vegetative 